many Mexican civilizations can you name off the top of your head? There are the Mayans, of course, and um, all the Tecs. you got the Aztecs, the Zapotecs, the Mixtecs, the Toltecs, the Waztecs, not to be confused with the Aztecs. Uh, you have the Tarascans, and there are others. But where I am now was a civilization, several civilizations, many people have lived here over hundreds of years, including during the time of Teotihuacan and during the Toltec expansion and uh, other people from before then. But uh, this is a part of Mexico that most people don't associate with having things like pyramids or ancient cities. People think that this is the desert. And this is, in fact, the northern border of Mesoamerica. I'm here today at El Coporo, a site that was abandoned almost a thousand years ago and founded almost a thousand years before that. And I've got some interesting things to show you and tell you about it. So I'm here now in Guanajuato in the northwestern corner in the municipality of Ocampo. And here in this municipality, there is uh, some mountains nearby here. And uh, we're here at El Coporo. This looks like one of the bird-shaped whistles or pots that was uh, on display at Cañada de la Virgen. Some other stuff that they found here. Drill? Spindle? This area is uh, right around here somewhere. And uh, it's part of what is known as the Tunal Grande. Here are the phases of uh, occupation of the site. came to the site, uh, I tried to get to the, uh, what, where it looks like it is on the map, and someone ran out of the desert there and said, you can't park here, you have to go to a museum, which is several kilometers away. And so I went to the museum, and uh, I'm in a giant bus that's going to drive back to the site. So this is a massive site of 85 kilometers, of 85 uh, hectares, and most of it's unexcavated. So there's potentially lots of buildings all around, even on what looks like flat land. You can see the cacti sometimes grow in right angles, and that's usually on the basis of buildings. And you can see that from a satellite, and even from the ground here. And since only 5% of it is excavated, there could be many more buildings lying out there under the soil that gets washed down from the mountain. In fact, it seems to be the case because there's a bunch of uh, cacti growing in square shapes uh, that seem to be on tops of the walls of ancient buildings. This is a uh, Nepal with a uh, tuna on top. And why the entire area is called the Tunale. This is a group of buildings that uh, used to have a patio in the middle, there would have been uh, wood on top of these stone foundations. And over there, under this roof, is preserved uh, what's left of a kitchen. And food would be prepared in these uh, ceramic vessels. You can see Nepal is growing everywhere. This is all planted tuna, which would have been something that uh, people would have eaten and also derived water from, and uh, it's edible as a meal. Although this entire area would have been farmed, and they also grew um, corn and beans, uh, amaranth, chili peppers, so there was uh, quite a lot to eat. And this valley is pretty, pretty wet, even though it's the dry season. Right now, there's a lot of water to be seen over there. So this ecosystem is called the uh, Tunao, which uh, name derives from the tuna, which is the name of the prickly pear cactus fruit that grows on top of these buildings. 
on top of these uh, plants. And you can see that it's, uh, can, they can grow rather large and create sort of a, almost a forest-like environment. Well, this is uh, ruins. There's still lots of buildings under here that haven't been dug up. All overgrown now. A guy with a machete over there, hanging out in the tree. So this is the main uh, lower plaza. There would have been houses around here. Uh, in the center was a ceremonial altar that was used for certain rituals. Up there is a, a building that has 20 columns, which is uh, notable because it uh, fits into the 160-day cycle that is uh, cut out by the directions of the sunrise and sunset alignments of uh, some of the altar buildings, and also fits together with the Mesoamerican calendar, which had uh, repeating cycles of 20 days. Here there would have been uh, two wooden columns that would hold up a roof. Uh, on the other side of that mountain range there's a forest and that's where they would have gotten the wood. And then it would have been uh, walls of bricks and adobe on the outside. So I'm now in the uh, in the central plaza, and uh, this is the central alignment of the site, uh, which I believe this goes to the west. And you can see the sunset there on um, April, the beginning of April. I want to say April third, and also some day in September, maybe September thirteenth. Uh, you can watch the sunset perfectly uh, in that spot. There's a tree blocking it now, but. Uh, that would be the sunset alignment of this place. And then uh, on other days, you can see the sun rise behind uh, on the opposite side. So there's exactly 160 days between uh, those two dates. And that seems to have been of significance, although it's not exactly clear what it was. Brick staircase. Uh, it's thought that maybe that first date in April has to do with uh, the beginning of the rain season, which begins in, I would say, May here uh, these days. But considering that this was built more than a thousand years ago, it could be that uh, that's when it started back then. These steps are very high and they're meant to be uh, climbed diagonally. That's why they have such an unusual shape. And there's also various channels for water here. And all of the water that collects here in this plaza ends up in a drain down there and then goes down the hill in the direction of the sunset. So here you can see that there's uh, some fire built there and what would be a drain or maybe a place for a column. Well, so now we're ascending to the upper part of the city. Uh, what, what I just showed you was the lower part at the bottom of the mountain and up above is a much grander site and where the elites of the city would live. Let's see, there's uh, water drainage canals built in to this path. We're in a rather steep canyon. Right now there's just a little trickle of water there, but that could be a river when it's raining. Oh, a wasp just flew into me. Very round Nepal. Oh, it's a waterfall? Yeah, wow. Looks like there's a little waterfall here and all the water trickles down here. We've been used as a well. Ascending now. So it turns out that that uh, well was a sacred bath and uh, people used to wash themselves in it uh, to ritually purify themselves before ascending here up to the sacred city. Very old path built into the side of the hill to go up there. Another little well here facing this giant uh, cliff over there.
Here are some holes that were used as mortars and pestles to grind together medicinal plants. Here you can see that there's a path and there's also a little channel for the water to go across and all the way down the hill. Getting pretty high up now. Here it looks like the steps would have led to some sort of building. And here looks to be the entrance to the city behind this giant rock. It's uh, about 2,300 feet up here and I'm not even at the top yet. Still have to go all the way up there. The view of the valley is incredible. Okay, you can eat these guys. Made it to the top. There's the pyramid. Lottery lying around. Here is the remains of the old city. You can see some of the original walls. There's uh, some ceramic lying around. All kinds of uh, buildings. It looks even like some kind of post still there that would have held up a roof and a spectacular view. This pyramid is also aligned to the sun. It faces the staircase faces the sunset, and then on the other side, the sun rises above that uh, that mountain and off in the distance on uh, special days. Some seven thousand people would have lived at this site, um, both on top and at the bottom. Views are incredible. There you can see the ceremonial plaza at the bottom and the outlines of some other buildings, and then a large road over there. El Coporo in the Tarascan language means uh, above the large road, so I think that's the road that it's referring to. From up here, they could keep an eye on everything that was happening in the city below. And you can see really clearly for an amazingly far distance, there's all kinds of buildings that are there and what looks like some cacti that are growing over uh, what would have been buildings there before. But you can see for miles and miles and miles. It's very beautiful. If you, if you scream, if you scream here, there's a crazy echo. Watch this. It's a large mound here that looks looks like it could be a pyramid that's not dug up, but maybe it's natural. Hard to say. They say that only 5% of this uh, site has been dug up, so there could be all kinds of buildings all around me right now. There's a lot of ceramic here. That's like some very shiny red ceramic. That's kind of all over the place. Two parallel lines here and here. Almost looks like cart ruts, but uh, they didn't have carts, so that doesn't really make sense. There you can see it. It still looks like it's natural stones, but it um, definitely would have been used for ritual purposes. Some piles of rocks here. Apparently the pyramid is aligned with something over there. Uh, not sure which direction that is. The north, I guess. Maybe the North Star. The interplay of light and shadows casts a very interesting uh, lighting on this canyon. Here's the river. seasonal. Right now is the dry season, so there's no water there. Looks like there's another building over there. It's amazing how it, uh, different lights just from the clouds uh, shining overhead, uh, blocking the light of the sun, are not. It creates uh, different colors completely in the landscape. You have vivid greens and um, kinds of interesting lichen and natural pigment in the rocks here. You can see why it was a sacred space.
Still some way to go. It was something like a 400 meter climb from uh, the valley below, or maybe even more. I'm quite hungry actually from all this hiking, but the nearest place to eat is something like an hour away on a dirt road. It's a good thing I brought a sandwich. It's very nice to walk. Air is uh, crisp and fresh. And there's the riverbed. There's very beautiful rocks here that are sort of bluish green color. Uh, very nice when the sunlight hits them. Over there is the road I took earlier to get to the top. I found some uh, ceramics, also what looked like some stones that uh, may have been chipped away to be arrowheads or knives or something like that. And uh, the site is of course littered with all that, all that stuff. Um, but you cannot take any federal crime and end up in Mexican prison. It's not a nice place to be. It's, uh, Really gotta watch her step around here. Can't imagine what this is like when it's wet. Once again, something that looks like cart ruts, but different width than before. Maybe it's just a channel from water, for water. Hard to say. There seems to be some kind of animal that's eating these red berries. I'm guessing it's the Tlacuache. Laquache is the name of a type of possum that lives here in Mexico. It looks a bit different than the one from the United States, a bit different coloration. It seems that there's another path over there. It goes around the hill somehow. So this is an amazing sight, but what's most amazing is that uh, nobody's ever here. In the guest book, you can see when people come and they write their names, the last group of people was here for three or four days ago, and before that it was another week or so, and uh, just almost nobody comes here at all. So if you want to come to El Copero, uh, I highly recommend it, and you'll probably have the whole thing to yourself. Back in the, in the main valley. You can see that there's some repair work being done. of people walking around. You can see that the ground is completely littered with pink pepper. And this is the same kind of pink pepper that you can buy in the supermarket. And there's some sort of uh, cactus fruit falling from the Nepal and from these pepper trees. So that's a look into uh, the world of El Coporo. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you for joining me on this little adventure. <laughs>